Hi, this is David Vallade over at AltaVista Technology. Today I was going to revisit the Sage Intech budgeting and planning tool. We already did a video a while back where we set up a budget inside of Sage Intech budgeting and planning, but today I wanted to just go in and give a quick example of how we can use the budgeting and planning tool to make things a little bit easier when it comes to budgeting. Right now you'll see the budgeting and planning tool. I'm logged in here and this is a, a sample budget that we have set up. And let me show a few ways that I might set up a budget just to keep it easy. Here's my budget. You can see I've already set this up like I described in a prior video, and I have different types of revenue. At a glance here, I can see that I've already done a little bit of work here. For my revenue, I can see that I have some money that I forecasted for the year. But let's add a number here a couple different ways. Let's suppose that over in my Texas entity, I'm going to be selling some security cameras. And we can say that security cameras is maybe a new venture, it's a new revenue stream that I have set up for my, my company. And I wanna budget some revenue and maybe some cost of revenue. So how might I do that? Well, I'll start with a low tech way. Here I can just come in, pick my line, nice and easy. And I could say, I'm going to forecast that I'm going to sell, oh, I don't know, uh, $5,000 every uh, month. And I do that and just that easy, the system has gone ahead and updated and put in all of my budgeted amounts for the year. I have a lot more options here. I can tag that to different dimensions. Uh, I can, instead of uh, just saying the same amount each billing, I can pick other options where I have a, a like a percentage growth or enter separate amounts for every individual month. But you get the idea here. Very quickly, I can put in all my numbers here. And a point I like to stress here, I've made this point in other videos, uh, you can use the Sage Intech budgeting and planning tool with your other users who are not accountants because I'm not overwhelmed with account numbers here. I can see nice clean labels and I can very quickly put in my numbers here. So the learning curve is not as steep as it might be otherwise. But there's another way to do this. I'd like to show that now. Under the budgeting and planning tool, there's this little model area. I'm gonna go there now. What I get to do in the model here is put together the building blocks that help me get to my numbers. Let me give you an example. So instead of putting in that dollar amount for security camera, let's say we're going to make a model. So uh, let's call this uh, security camera sales in Texas. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm modeling, I'm forecasting what are the assumptions, what are the components that go into forecasting my camera sales for Texas. Great, let's do that. So what are my assumptions? So first thing is, well, what's gonna drive my budget for camera sales in Texas? Uh, we'll say monthly camera units sold. And again, I'm keeping this easy, but you can get the idea here. I could get a little fancy. We'll keep it easy for now. We'll just put in a nice, easy uh, monthly uh, quantity sold. So I'll say, ooh, I don't know. Um, uh, maybe we'll say uh, 800. I tab off the 800 and I and you can see here it's saying 800 what? 800% quantity uh, and so on and so on. Uh, well, I was saying these are units sold. So that's just a number. It's just a whole number. That's the first part. Next, I'm going to say, um, how about my um, average revenue per camera? I'm going to make up a number here. So I don't know, $10 and 50 cents. And I'm going to say that's US dollars. I can put little comments here off to the side to kind of explain how I got to that, but this is uh, coming along. Okay. And let's have one more assumption here. So when we're, we're thinking about budgeting for camera sales, I want to say average cost per camera. And for this, uh, again, I'm making up numbers, but we'll say $7 and 50 cents. I did this very quickly, obviously, but you can see it's coming together here. I'm putting my number of cameras sold, a nice easy number per month, and I can have my revenue and my cost. And for any kind of budgeting, there's some amount of this going on. This is sort of bottom-up budgeting. You're thinking like, what are all the little fine-grained actions and how do they come together and how does that roll up to my budget? But we've done it. We, we've come up with just the basics here, just this little bit here. If I'm going to have 800 cameras sold per month in, in Texas, and here's my price and my cost, this is coming together where you can start seeing how this can fit into my budget. But we're not there yet. I just have the, the building blocks here, my assumptions. Now I get to do this thing called a model line. So I'll add that here. So here I get to give it a little formula. So we're gonna say, um, 
camera revenue. And ooh, lots of choices here. Uh, how do I want to uh, calculate this using the assumptions up above? I'm just going to say same amount each month. I'll tab off that. And then what's my amount? Well, I could do lots of interesting little computations here, but watch what happens when I hit this little function button. I get this pop-up where I get to build a formula. This is not the hardest one in the world. You can kind of see how this works. I can say my camera is sold times my average revenue per camera, and I'll say done. Is my answer a number or a dollar? It is a dollar. And I get to do some other things as far as, um, is that seasonal? Is it for what time frame? I even get to have a pretty color code on it. And now I have very quickly put together a budget um, computation. Now I just have to add that to my budget itself. So I'm gonna click add to budget. This looks familiar. This is my budget that I saw a moment ago. And there's my sales security cameras in Texas right at the top. I'm going to replace that line's content and I'm gonna confirm that. And then I will save that. And you can see, the system has gone ahead and done some nice little math for me. Well, that's pretty good. Now I have my camera revenue. Let's do one more step here. I'm going to add some costs. So I'm going to click the add model line and go through a similar set of steps that we did a moment ago. Here I'm going to say cost of goods sold cameras. You can always change these labels later. And uh, as for my amount, once again, I'm going to dive into my formula builder here. I'm going to say uh, my monthly camera unit sold times average cost per camera. All done. Just like we did a moment ago, maybe I'll pick another pretty color here. And then I, I need to say that this is, a, and my answer here is a dollar amount, and then we get to add it to the budget. All right, so let's go find it. I think in, in this environment here, I only have one cost of goods sold account, so that's what I'm going to pick, and I'll confirm and save. And there we have it. So now I have put in all my revenue and all my cost of goods sold. Now, why did I do that? Well, let's think about that. I can now look at these answers in a few ways. So if you if you file away those numbers, 100 grand roughly in revenue, 72 grand roughly in costs, I can see that a number of ways. Now there's this sheets option here where I can actually look at all my numbers laid out here. And there's my sales security camera. And you can see that line if you track that across that, yep, that's my number there. And my cost of revenue, I think I have a few things going on here. And I had some other numbers that I had along with what we already entered just a moment ago. So you can see that this budget is build, being built out. In fact, one of the great advantages of the Sage and Tech budgeting and planning tools, I could actually have a number of users all collaborating together all at once on this. So we could be all budgeting, all working on the same thing at one time. Gone are the days of having multiple Excel spreadsheets being circulated all around. So this is really cool. All right. But if I go back over into my inputs that we we started, you can see if I go over, the, here I am back on that line, uh, sales security cameras. And this is where I was playing around earlier ago. But you can see the line up here says revenue for model now. So instead of changing the numbers here, this, these are coming from what I did a moment ago in that model section to build that formula. And I like this a lot because here's what typically happens when budgeting. This is a thing that can frustrate people to no end. You or your users come together, you build out all your assumptions, and you have everything all set, and you, you build out your budget, but then something happens. Something comes along where you say, oh, I just negotiated something where actually our cost per camera is going to go down um, next year. It's not going to be an average cost of $7.50. It's going to be more like $7.10. So if I change that, then my cost here just went down to $68,000. And that flows all the way through down to my budget. If I say my revenue is going to go up, and I think, actually, you know what? We're going to be able to get that price increase um, through so that I can actually raise my average uh, selling price per camera up to $11 per unit. Um, my numbers are all changing here. This was a very simple set of calculations that we did here together, just units and then an average price here. And we did it as just a, a straight amount per month. But it doesn't take long to get to the idea where you start thinking, what if I had a calculation here that had dozens and dozens of assumptions that are all fluid and all moving in real time? And I might have all sorts of assumptions that could be changing all the time, and I want to swap those out and have my answer go all the way down to my budget. This gets me there, right? That way, I, we can all show our work. We can see how we come up with a number. So if your boss says, how did you get to $8,800 of forecasted revenue in February? I can say, well, here's, here's how I got there. 
and then we can fine tune our assumptions to get a more accurate budget. We're only scratching the surface with the Sage Intact budgeting and planning tool, but hopefully this gives a little bit of a hint of what we can do. If you have questions about this product or anything about Sage Intact in general, don't hesitate to reach out to us over at altavistatech.com.